EOS Apex class consoles have additional hardware that let us take direct selects to the next level. The number of target keys on your Apex console will depend on which model you have. This Apex 5 has two banks of 10 target keys, while the larger models, the Apex 10 and the Apex 20, have four banks and five banks, respectively. Target keys are OLED buttons that are populated with our existing direct selects. Let's look at how to do that. If I hold down displays, you'll see I get an edit key on each of my banks of target keys. So I'm gonna go ahead and press edit two here on my bank on the left. You'll see we get a pop-up here on our main screen that allows us to change some familiar flexi and increment options. If I wanna change the target type, I will press the target here and I'm gonna change these to focus palettes. You'll see those are populated with the focus palettes we've already created in our show file. The arrow keys can be used to page through your targets. If we don't wanna have those on there, we have some options there as well. I'm gonna go back into the editor and I can choose to have both arrows at the top, both at the bottom. I can split like we had already. I can have a next only arrow at the top or bottom, or I can hide them completely giving me 10 full places to put content. If the arrows aren't there, or if you only have a single arrow in the other direction, you can always hold displays and get temporary navigation arrows like this. Let's go ahead and populate our second bank with some color palettes. And I'll go ahead and remove the arrows there as well. We can also change the starting target number on a bank. So for example here, if I wanted to start with color palette five, I can simply select it here, and that will be the first target on the bank of target keys. For now, we'll start back at red. Using the target keys is exactly like using direct selects on the touchscreen, except you have the physical button. Let's look at those. So I've grabbed a few fixtures here, and I can call up my focus palettes or color palettes simply by pressing those keys. One more item to point out is our new icon functionality which we go into more detail in a later video, but I do want to point out here that if you have icons associated with your targets, you can change how they're displayed on the target keys independently of how they're displayed on other direct selects. So if you want them to be large, you can choose icon center and those icons will fill the target key. What is mapped to your target keys is stored into snapshots. Note that each bank has a unique number. Here we have one and two and on the larger hardware, we'll have up to five different bank numbers. Those bank numbers are similar to our monitor mapping in that when you bring the show file to a different console, bank one of your target keys is going to be populated on bank one of whichever console you load that file on. Another new piece of hardware on the Apex console is our keypad touchscreen. This is found right above your keypad and serves several functions. First of all, let's look at the soft keys. So soft keys are still accessible here on your touchscreen, but I also now have physical keys labeled SK1 through six that I can use to give a similar feel as the rest of the keypad. I also have a more soft keys button for paging my soft keys back and forth. The other functions of the keypad touchscreen are to assign a magic sheet or custom direct selects to it. We will cover how to create those in later videos but for now, I have a couple of simple ones as examples. The keypad touchscreen is a haptic touchscreen, which is sort of bridging the gap between buttons and a touchscreen. If I rest my finger on the screen, it won't react, but I have to give a deep press and the screen will give me a haptic thunk back telling me that I've pressed it. This allows me the customization of a touchscreen, but still allows me to keep my eyes on the stage while I'm waiting to engage the button. If you so choose, you can change the level of haptic feedback or disable it completely in setup. Let's take a look at where that is. If we go to device settings and face panel, and then look at haptics, you'll see we can increase or decrease the haptic force, which is the amount the touchscreen will thunk back at you, or if desired, you can completely disable it. I'm gonna leave that on for today. In addition to displaying magic sheets, the keypad touchscreen can also display custom direct selects. That is done by using the setup button, choosing custom direct selects, 
and choosing which bank you want to display. Although custom direct selects will be covered in a later video, you can see this is a way to combine target types and assign those on your screen for easy playback.